Today we're going to talk about croquis and textile artworks. This is a really great example of a traditional textile gouache painting. It's dated 1893, so it's over 120 years old. The way the artwork was produced is a repeat size was already determined prior to the painting. The repeat size we can see through the pencil marks that's going through the artwork. We have three pillars here, three columns. We have this swag of a motif moving up the column, accompanied by a rose growing off the side. And in between, we have a trailing vine, and then we have this swag that's going back and forth through the repeat. We can also see some drop shadows on the flowers, whereas in other ones, we do not see the drop shadow. This was most likely sold to a manufacturer who is going to adapt the artwork and really select one of these kind of looks whether it's a trailing vine a or a swag, or they might really like the pink that's nestled between these motifs, or they might choose not to include it. They might even think that the drop shadows that are painted are either worthy or not worthy of moving forward in the artwork. So there's really a few options as to how somebody might actualize this artwork. This is a textile artwork that was painted specifically for the wall covering industry. We can see pencil marks that are defining where the repeat begins and ends at. And we also see repeating elements throughout the artwork. Anything that's within the boundary of the single repeat, you can see the artist really detailed out the motifs. So for example, if I'm looking at this plant here, we can see that it's detailed out with a drop shadow of black. And then outside the repeat unit, you can see they haven't wasted the time to put those details in, but the color is there to give us impression of how the movement is throughout the artwork. This artwork was executed with pencil and looks like potentially watercolor. If I flip it over, you can see there's some call outs here regarding what color should be used. It's very urgent. But most likely this is a preparatory sketch for something that would be rendered with a lot more detail later. This artwork was executed using what looks or appears to be marker. You can see they've drawn out a grid, started to draw in smaller details like a subgrid or some dots. Um, but overall, this is not executed in repeat. Uh, there will be uh, somebody with the expertise to place it in repeat required to make this artwork work in production. This artwork was executed on point paper or grid paper. Most artworks that you'll find on grid paper are being adapted for either rug weaving or jacquard weaving. The artwork's also done in a manner that can be mirrored. So if I were to mirror this entire side over, we can see that this damask medallion would make one large motif. We can also see the acanthus leaf on the side here that goes right off the point paper. That motif is connecting back to this side here. So it repeats vertically and then horizontally, it's mirrored.
this particular artwork was executed in a manner that would be utilized as a border around some sort of textile, perhaps for the home. I'm assuming this is done for a kitchen textile, as this would go around the outside perimeter, and on the interior central panel you'll see a kind of static matrix of flowers. This artwork is a 1970s interpretation of a houndstooth pattern. It looks like it was done originally with a pencil outline and the details were drawn back in using a marker. This textile artwork is a French Aubusson area rug. We can see that it is a half of an overall rug and then it's been quartered down where they've rendered out that one space. This space would be mirrored, this whole other element would be mirrored this way. Same thing with this artwork. We can see a central medallion, we have a border, and then that whole border would be mirrored to produce the frame of that area rug. The artist that produced this gouache painting put down color swatches that was used to produce this artwork. If a manufacturer were to go to a design studio and purchase this artwork, they would know they would at least need the capabilities to replicate it using six colors. In some cases, art studios who paint original artwork used to paint the colorways of that artwork too. We're going to use Photoshop moving forward to recolor our artwork and put things in repeat. But I want to show you some examples of you know, what that might look like. It's a lot of paint mixing, a lot of reiteration of the same. Um, it certainly takes skill and patience. Some artworks are not executed in repeat. Some of them show us at least the spacing of what it is like in between the motifs in the artwork. So although we can't see repetition, we get a good sense of the spacing. Somebody that's knowledgeable on repeats, layout, spatial balance would have to adapt these artworks to make them manufacturable. Here are a few other gouache painted textile artworks to take a look at. This is a pretty complex artwork despite it's only using two colors. We have a neutral ground followed by a darker motif of a leaf with painted dots on the surface. This is a really good example of how to maximize a limited color palette within your artwork. I encourage you as you move forward in developing your own artwork that you think about how important materials are to that process or what kind of mood or feeling are you trying to create in your artwork. For example, these are two of the same uh, subject matter executed in different uh, materials, watercolor and uh, colored pencil and pastel. So although I'm really kind of painting the whole motif out, I might only utilize this section to produce an overall artwork. And same thing here, I might only look at this area which kind of looks like popcorn to me, to produce an overall textile artwork. I might explore different, um, different ways to interfere with the paint as it's wet and when it dries. So for example, in this particular artwork, I was using watercolor and used rubbing alcohol to kind of clean away the areas where the bluer, I added green, and at the end I went back and added red into them. 
Same thing with this. I might develop a painted stripe with the intent of seaming this side to that side and reworking the color for a more suitable application. In this artwork, I was using watercolor with salt on top. I might develop textures separate from the artwork. That way I can go in and layer them specifically in Photoshop to make the artwork look distressed, um, make it feel more textural like a linen or uh, some sort of woven material. Or I might make it look like faux bois, like a fake wood or um, a wood grain. I encourage you to be exploratory in making your own artworks.